Hello guys and welcome to the channel. This is my first time making a video essay style video about coasters, so I would appreciate it if you guys could give me some feedback down below. Remember to like, subscribe, and keep your arms and legs inside the vehicle at all times. As many of you already know, King's Dominion is a theme park operated by Cedar Fair located in Doswell, Virginia near Richmond. The park did get a new coaster last year, Tembele, a 4D free spin, which oh is fine. God, I'm pretty oh, sure the coaster oh, enthusiasts oh, weren't too thrilled about this addition due to the closing of Volcano the Blast Coaster in 2019. The last major coaster added to the park was Twisted Timbers, a breathtaking RMC that I consider to be one of the best coasters in Virginia. The other main coasters at the park include Intimidator 305, an Intamin Giga Coaster, often considered one of, if not the most, intense roller coaster in the world, and Dominator, one of the best B&M floorless coasters out there. Other coasters include Grizzly, a pretty good Woody, despite the roughness, Racer 75, a very old wooden coaster that opened with the park, Anaconda, one of the worst arrow multi-loopers I've ever ridden, Tumbili, a 4D free spin, Reptilian, a mock rides bobsled, Apple Zapple, a wild mouse coaster, Flight of Fear, a premier rides dark coaster, Backlot Stunt Coaster, a small premier rides launch coaster, Woodstock Express, a small woody, and the Great Pumpkin Coaster, a kitty coaster. If you were to ask most coaster enthusiasts what the best par theme park in Virginia is, they would most likely say Busch Gardens Williamsburg, especially after the addition of Pantheon, a record-breaking Intamin multi-launch. Now while I can't necessarily prove King's Dominion is better than Busch Gardens Williamsburg, I would like to say that in my opinion it most certainly is. When comparing parks like this, the simplest way to do it is coaster by coaster, which is what we're going to do today. To get it started, we'll talk about some of the weaker coasters. Invader, the only coaster I didn't ride, is basically the equivalent of Racer 75. Both coasters are smaller, medium-sized woodies with a relatively mid-ride experience. Now we have Loch Ness Monster, a janky arrow looper famous for its interlocking loops. Now I'm not crazy about this ride like some people are. In my eyes, it's a small-scale arrow looper that's been maintained very well. Now this, without a doubt, knocks out Anaconda, but I feel is the equivalent of Backlog Stunt Coaster and Tembili combined. Therefore, taking them out of the equation, now we have Griffin, a B&M dive coaster. Now, I don't really like B&M dive coasters. I find that even in the front row, the signature hanging feature isn't enough of an angle to be thrilled. I also find them forceless, unlike Dominator, which I feel single-handedly takes care of Griffin and also takes part of Tempesto with it. Tempesto is a Skyrocket 2, a popular model at Busch Gardens parks. I feel that the Woodstock Express finishes off Tempesto, getting us to Apollo's Chariot, a B&M hyper coaster that I feel is also sadly forceless. Grizzly, in my opinion, is a one-for-one -one trade with Apollo's Chariot, being an okay woody offering some wood ejector and laterals. Next is Verbolta, a zero family launch coaster with a nice drop track to thrill riders. I personally love this ride, and in my opinion, it takes three coasters with it. These being Flight of Fear, Apple's Apple, and Reptilian, which is forever going to be Avalanche, but whatever. Now we have two coasters for each part. This contest could go either way, but there is a winner at the end of the day. Next is Alpengeist, a B&M invert that offers great positive G's and a smooth ride throughout the trees. I really enjoy this coaster, and say it might take as much as 70% of King Dominion's co-flagship coaster, Twisted Timbers. This leaves it to the final coaster at Busch Garden Williamsburg, Pantheon. Clearly the best coaster there, giving great launches, intense forces, great airtime, and breathtaking inversions. I'm a sucker for Intamin, and I've always thought they were the best coaster manufacturer around. But Pantheon isn't the only Intamin in this conversation. Intimidator 305 is a world-class coaster. You will probably never see a coaster that can touch I-305's intensity, speed, and height combo unless that Intamin 600-foot coaster in Saudi Arabia is actually like it looks. In my opinion, 
Pantheon and I-305 are both amazing coasters, and it's impossible to say which one is better because they're so different. That means that I-305 and Pantheon is a one for one trip. You may be asking, but isn't that it? I think you've forgotten about the 30% of twisted timbers, which should be more, but I was very generous to Alpenfest. Therefore, that is why, in my opinion, King's Dominion is easily the best roller coaster theme park in Virginia.